The Goat House is back with the NFL teams that impressed the most and disappointed the most here so far in week six. We still have to finish Sunday Night Football and Monday Night Football, but don't worry, Monday night we break down every team's performance from the week. Let's break down my biggest winners and losers. Coming in at number three, biggest winner of week six, the Chicago Bears dominating in London. The Jacksonville Jaguars 35-16 to started a little slow, but they really got going. And the Jags usually are pretty good in London. I know it's a different year and the Jags aren't playing so well, but the Bears really picking it up, you know, and just gaining the momentum and once again like last week I know they're not beating the best teams but they're showing that they're gaining momentum they're getting better Caleb Williams get everybody's getting better the quarterback gets better everything get, gets better that's kind of it kind of reminds me of what the commanders were doing a few weeks ago before they really caught fire it's what they needed moving forward and people still weren't expecting them to win and then they you know started beating better teams so it's really a good look for the Chicago Bears, you know, after especially after a slow start, kind of getting going right away. Cole Komet was a beast in this game, getting Keenan Allen, getting everybody going. DeAndre Swift was a letdown early in the year. Caleb Williams was a letdown. The offensive line was a letdown. I mean, there was plays where they had Caleb Williams protected very, very well. Everybody's getting going right now, so it's fantastic to see. The defense continues to be that Bears defense, which is you can definitely make the case it's the be the best defense in football, and they create turnovers. They just continue to do it. And something I realize over the the years, I mean, every year in NFL history, teams that consistently create turnovers on the on that year, that season, they continue to do it. Even those years where teams are like, how are they getting these lucky turnovers? That's not the Bears. The Bears are creating those turnovers because they're good at it. They're a very good defense. But even the teams in the past that were like lucky and getting a bunch of turnovers, for some reason, it just keeps going throughout the whole year. So it's a really good sign for the Chicago Bears after a dominant win against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and uh, they get they get a bye week now. And then some winnable games, but some tougher games too, which will be really good to see, but a perfect situation going forward for the Chicago Bears. They come in at number three. A lot of good big winners this week. The number two biggest winner of week six, we're going to stay in the NFC North. The Green Bay Packers dominating the Arizona Cardinals 34-13. to This game was done. It felt very soon. The Packers absolutely dominant. This is a team I said going into the year, they're going to get better as the year goes on, kind of like last year, but another step up as they're a little more developed, and we're seeing it already. That That is a special Packers team, and it's going to get better, and we see it early. And at what, what they're capable of at home, they're a much better team looking at last week to this week at home. They have some serious home field advantage there. Jordan Love taking a step up again. Just coming back from injury, maybe too soon, and another step up this week. And no matter who's in at receiver, who goes down, who has to step up, they come in, make plays. Romeo Dubs back you know, after what happened last week, make a big time. They can run the ball. They can throw the ball. They, anybody steps in, they can make a play. Defense kind of was a little off for a couple weeks, starting with that Vikings game. Jair Alexander, one of the best corners of football, has been out. He comes back this week. Boom, the defense looks locked in. And the Cardinals have been a little inconsistent. One week we're making fun of them, but a couple weeks, even sometimes when they lose, they look really, really good. That's a good team. It's a, a team you cannot mess around with. They can throw the ball. They can run the ball. The Packers just dominated them, you know, plain and simple. They dominated them. So you're kind of seeing signs of what the Packers are, and it's kind of scary on what they could become because I really do think that's a team built because the way they're built and because their coaching staff, they're, they're you know, more of a playoff team. If they make it there, I'd imagine they make it there. But I like the defense. Again, Alexander coming back in, them stepping it back up. Just a dominant, dominant outing. NFC North. Looks really good. Packers coming at number two. And some honorable mentions I just have to shout out before we get to number one. The Ravens, it's hard leaving them off the list. They beat a really good commander's team. They're awesome on offense. Defense slipped up here and there but made enough plays uh, to win the game. They're a little sloppy on offense. They actually could have put this game away earlier or had a huge lead. So a little sloppy to keep their opponent in there. We've seen that before. So maybe that's what's keeping them off in the top three. But they looked really good. Uh, how about the Chargers? They let the Broncos come back in. But they dominated this game early. They, they won this game early. Lights out on both sides of the ball. They, they looked, when you look at this game, division rival, the two teams that we, we think are in the same boat, same area, like both pretty decent teams. But if you watch this game, it just felt like the Chargers in this matchup are plain and simple better. It's not doesn't mean the Broncos can never beat them, but that's, that's kind of why I consider them an honorable mention winner. Uh, but they did let them come back a little bit, but really good outing for them. The Steelers, I had to shout out the Steelers. Dominant win against the Raiders. They should win that game, but the offense got going. I know the defense helped them out, but Justin Fields getting better and better. Najee Harris was awesome in this game, 
and, and just to con- to be able to continue to improve on offense because you know they're going to have a good defense, but a dominant outing for the Steelers once again. And I have to shout out the Buccaneers. It was a little sloppy at times, let the Saints back in, but they scored 51 points on a great Saints defense, so you have to shout them out as well. But let's get to number one, the biggest winner. And we're going to stay with the NFC North. All the three winners, the Detroit Lions dominating the Cowboys. And I, I did predict them to win in the ass beating, but this was a snot pounding, folks. They dominated this game from the start. And you could say maybe not the, the biggest winner. This is more of like who is the most impressive list. But you could say maybe not the biggest winners because they lost their star pass rusher that was awful, Aiden Hutchinson. Um, you know, so you could make that case, but they were the most impressive team. And I guess it's debatable. Some of the other NFC North teams, but they went out there and just dominated the Cowboys and the Cowboys were heating up. They were getting better on both sides of the ball, but they, they had their way with them. The Cowboy, I mean, the Lions, they, whenever they wanted to move the ball in any way, they could do it. Think about it. If you watched that game or if you went to watch, went back to watch some of that, they moved the ball. No matter what, it was the easiest thing on the planet. They can throw a deep shot. They can throw it underneath. They can run it up the gut. They can run it outside, whatever they want. And they created turnovers on defense. People were like, yeah, they slipped up against the Seahawks. They left up a lot of points, even though they won big. So people were doubting that defense a little bit. Defense just was dominant. They made plays. Brian Branch was all over the place. So this is a really good outing. They look like the best team in football. There's a couple other teams that look like the best team in football. Lions, you could say, look like the best team in football, though. Looks really good. It's tough that Hutchinson went down, but... Just completely destroyed. I, I, the Cowboys probably aren't as good as they were in the past, but it's a good football team. In Dallas, they completely destroyed them. The biggest, most impressive team of the week, the Lions. And how about the NFC North looking good? The three biggest losers, the most disappointing teams of Week 6. Number three is going to be the Arizona Cardinals. Got dominated from the by the Packers. It was over from the start, it felt like. Maybe trying to sneak back in there, but... Can't trust this team. Very, very inconsistent. One week they look really good. One week very bad. And that tells me they're inconsistent. And they're they're not consistent enough to, to make the playoffs possibly. It's very early. And they have the talent. They have the flashes. But you just can't trust this team. They're going to get outplayed by the big-time teams. I know they, they did uh, uh, beat the Niners last week. But they got outplayed most of that game, actually. A little fortunate to come back. So it's just a, they they are proven to be we can't figure them out but they what we can figure out is that they are proven to be an inconsistent team and that's really not the formula to make the playoffs because you're gonna have to streak you know you're gonna have to put together something good at some point here to do that and there's a lot of tough teams I mean there's four teams in one division in the NFC that look really good and you know teams like the Eagles are gonna turn you know turn it on the Falcons are only gonna get better so you know the, what the Bucks are doing look at them so not a great sign at this point of the year where things should be figured out uh not a great sign for the Arizona Cardinals they come in at number three number two is gonna be the Dallas Cowboys you think they'd be deserving of number one because they just they got the snot pounded out of them that's maybe putting it lightly uh they were outmatched but man it, it was the worst part about this is how are you not able to keep keep up I mean even a little bit with the Lions like I guess you don't have to keep up like back and forth I mean obviously you want to win the game but it's you should be able to move the ball, especially late in the game. They were trying pretty late in the game. I mean, not they put Cooper Rush at, in at some point, but just still Dak still turning the ball over. He's probably fortunate he didn't have one more turnover earlier in the game that, that could have counted, but just nothing, nothing going for them. So it just shows that they can't really compete against the playoff teams, and it's not a good sign for them now. And let's say if they're in the playoffs, there's just no faith in that. They, they kind of caught fire a couple weeks ago, and then – you know, going into the week after, excuse me, going into the week after, which was last week against the Steelers. But how about against the good teams? They haven't really proven anything yet. And Dak is, I view as a good quarterback. Is he a great quarterback? You know, that that's, you know, I'm not going to go that far. But it, right now, it's, um, it's not good. It's not good right now. They need a lot more help. They seem like a lesser team of what they were in the past. And they weren't good enough in the past. So, just a brutal outing when you just get dominate, dominated like that. They got to rely on playing lesser teams. I know Lions might be the best team in football, but look at what the Seahawks offense did that defense a couple weeks ago. You're at home. They can't win at home. It's pretty brutal. Just very disappointing the team in general, but mainly that offense and Dak Prescott. Honorable mentions, you could mention the Broncos because they're slow start. They should be a little closer with the Chargers and maybe the Raiders because they got dominated by the Steelers, but... I don't know if there's anything super shocking there. I don't mention the Titans, who are very close to being in the top three. The only reason they're not is you could argue they outplayed the Colts for most of this game, but lost. That's kind of an issue. Will Levis is bad. The coaching is bad. Uh, maybe they feel they're a little limited from Will Levis, but 
coaching is awful in this game. I know Spears got hurt, but you are running all over the Colts as one does, and you have a lead. Pollard should have had 30 carries, or him plus Spears. I know Spears got hurt at some point, but he was in the game for a little bit. They should have had 30 carries combined, or 30 plus. You had, if you are winning, if any NFL team, if you have a lead, and the game is moving, it's going, it's not super early, and you can run the ball, it's proven you can run the ball, and you know the other team can't stop the run, it's a choke, a major choke if you lose the game, and they they did that. So it's not all on Levis here. Uh, defense played well, it, it just kind of gave up in big moments. I know the penalties didn't go their way, but yeah, very. look at the rest of the Tennessee schedule too, it's not looking good. They might have the first overall pick, which with that defense shouldn't be the case. Uh, so those are some honorable mentions there. Uh, before we get to number one, which is the Jacksonville Jaguars getting dominated in London by the Chicago Bears. They're typically good in London. Well, first off, whoever's decision it was to try to fly late during a hurricane and the flight gets late, I mean, that they should be fired. But still, you expect them to be a, a lot closer in this game. The Bears are heating up, but they're not, you know, not the, a juggernaut and the Jaguars get dominated. Pretty good start until Gabe Davis drops a touchdown. You have some false starts and then they're sloppy in this game. The coaching's awful. I think Ryan Nielsen's got to be a good defensive coach looking at his job last year, but man, too much man coverage, too much predictability here. You got players giving up, so a lot of that's Doug Peterson. The offensive coaching's very poor, but Trevor Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence was playing all right early. His, uh, and throughout the game, the players were letting him down, but I mean, and he had some bad throws at the end. He's got to get the ball out sometimes. They can't run the ball. They can't consistently throw the ball. The offensive line is not consistent. The defense is awful. It is the worst pass defense of football. It should not be. They don't trust. It's clear they do not trust the defense to run zone coverage. Otherwise, they would run more zone coverage. But at this point, you might as well just try to mix it up. So they think they have a player, like a personnel issue on defense. I don't know. Um, it's a mess right now. It feels like the coaching staff is losing the team. They're, and it, they're even more of a loser because they're stuck in London for another week. Now there's a big, there's a winner part of that. They should have the advantage, right? They should have the advantage and they should beat the Patriots. But everybody, you know, that's associated with, with Jack, as a fan with Jacksonville wants Doug Peterson fired. If they were coming home right now, he would be fired. He would be, if they were at home or they're in Chicago, in London coming home, he would be fired. But because they're in London still, they have to stay there. They're, I don't think they're going to fire him. Uh, at all and there's a decent chance they beat the Patriots which means they'll probably come home and they could still fire him but probably not he'll probably keep the, the job so he has to lose the Patriots and that'll be I mean you got to be going the season's over at that point so I don't know if you want that the other issue is you fire him who the hell is taking his spot because there's some it's just brutal choices after that I'm surprised Nielsen's not doing a better job, but he obviously doesn't think he has the players. The Falcons went from one of the worst defenses to one of the better, you know, maybe not one of the better, but a lot better last year under him. And he didn't run only man coverage. He ran a bit of it, uh, but it's brutal. Top to bottom, all of it. Players giving little efforts here. Cisco say that, um, you know, at the after the game in an interview, Andre Cisco. Felt like it parts this game like they're in it. Hey, they're out playing the Bears for a teeny bit. And then nope. And then hey, they're in it. Got the interception. Nope. It's just top to bottom, one of the worst teams in football right now. It is brutal. But that'll be it for this video. Our next video on Monday night, I break down and grade and tier every single team, even the Sunday and Monday night teams' performances. We do it every Monday night. And we'll have power rankings, weekly picks, score predictions, a lot more. We have you covered every single week. So go ahead and subscribe. Turn notifications on. Like as well. It'd be much, much appreciated. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.